Hello, everybody. So happy day today. We are going to talk about natural materials assignment. So you guys can see here from my screen, I have a lot of stuff that is located here in the front from spices to natural items that I found or worked with outside to going to the grocery store and actually having some uh, frozen fruit or frozen veggies, but really neat to experiment. I really encourage you guys just have fun and just try out different types of materials. This is all about natural dyes, natural materials assignment. So we're going back to the past and thinking about how our ancestors created pigments and what they did with the natural materials. Now I know we're using things that we have perhaps purchased from a, a store, but this is still great because it is still natural materials. Um, instead of using paint or uh, other types of mediums that we're used to as artists. So I have a sheet of paper here that I cut and I'm going to just experiment right now to see how things are going. What I'm using is I'm actually using a mixed media paper, which is not needed, but I just wanna tell you guys, mixed media is good for different types of medium. So acrylic watercolor, pen and pencil. There's also watercolor paper, there's canvas pads, um, a lot of different ones. I know the screen's not showing the entire size of this, but this is a 11 by 14 size. It's 98 pound paper. What that means, if you ever interested in purchasing paper uh, for your own artwork, that just means that it is the weighted higher in the amount of thickness of the paper. So they measure by the ream. So the thicker the paper, the thicker the pounds, then it will be a little bit more, uh, again, thicker paper, I guess just lack for a better term. So this paper is a little bit uh, more durable and I can use it for putting it onto a wet surface. It doesn't absorb as easily as maybe it would with a um, inkjet printer paper or um, a notebook paper where if we add water to it, it will coil and it will buckle, um, which is fine. Please use any paper that you have at home. I'm not expecting anybody to purchase anything. We don't have any required materials for this. It's just stuff that you have at home. I do have brushes here that I'm going to work with to paint, but you're welcome to use a rag. You can use even your fingers. Um, you can use a stick. I've had students try that out before. So just really keeping it natural. Um, I even had a student who had a um, animal that had a lot of fur, a large rabbit, and it was um, shedding season. And so as she brushed this rabbit, of course, a lot of hair would come out. And so she actually made a brush with the hair from the rabbit. So really neat to see um, how that works and just exploring with this assignment. Okay. So first of all, I'm um, just gonna show you guys right here. These are cranberries. I actually freeze some cranberries. Uh, typically they're in season or you can get them at the store around the holidays. And so I stock up on them because I use them for other purposes. Um, but I went ahead and just took some frozen ones out. And then what I did is I just used a utensil and I just started to um, poke at them. So then they started to create some sort of kind of like a pigment to them, like a reddish color. I also added olive oil. I'm going to try that out. I've had this assignment for a previous semester and students tried different things. They used alcohol, some used rubbing alcohol, some actually grinded them in a blender. Not that you need to do this because it can become um, like a binding agent when you mix everything together. I just keep it very simple. Uh, so it's just experimenting kind of quickly with these concepts. This is uh, mixed with soil and also dirt. So I just added some water. And so we're going to see how this works. And I just have it kind of squishing around, moving around. And I have these little jars. Some of them are little jelly jars that I've kept through the years. Um, anything that you have, a paper plate or something that can just mix. These are mixed greens, and this is actually, I'm gonna use the back side of this older brush that I have here. This has some spinach in it, also water mixed in it. What's great about if you do ever get spinach, um, especially if they're in packages, what happens, um, as we all know, if we don't eat them, they get old, um, or they just kind of start to have more of a 
softer substance to them. So these were actually older ones I was going to throw out, but I thought perfect for this assignment. I put them in the microwave for like 10 seconds just to kind of make them even more soggy or softer. So here now is how these look. So this is spinach and some mixed greens from a salad packet. And this will get a little bit of green, um, but please know that I have tried some of this stuff before and the green sometimes will absorb in the actual paper. So it just depends. Um, we may not get the bright, bright colors that you and I might be wanting, but that's okay. Turmeric. Turmeric is always something that I found is a great color that really will have like more of a brighter color compared to some of the other natural dyes. So I went ahead and put some down on just the backside of a lid. I'm going to add some water to that. And then what I'm going to do is just mix them around. Again, please use um, whatever you find, whatever you have around your home, um, yard, maybe where you work. You can find some stuff on the ground um, or where you're around. But this is really neat now. It's absorbing the water and it's becoming now like kind of a thicker paste like quality of thickness. Okay. I also have paper towels around by me so I can clean off my brushes and I have some water here to also clean my brush. All right, some other things. Um, I went ahead and picked these flowers. They're starting to uh, wilt and break and this is really neat if I were to grind them or just to kind of push at them and try to get some color into them. But um, I'm not going to do that right now but I just want to show you just some fun things that you can do. This is actually from an olivera plant. So right next to me, I have an olivera plant and I cut off just a little portion of it. And this has a gooey substance as we're probably familiar with, with olivera. And so I'm gonna actually maybe mix it into some of these different colors or pigments to maybe act like a binding agent, almost kind of like egg yolk or something along those lines. Okay, so first I'm gonna go ahead and experiment. So I have the sheet of paper. I'm just gonna try things out. First, I'm going to try out the cranberries. Just try to grab some. I'm gonna see how it pulls onto the paper. Now I'm not mixing my brush. It's a dry brush, so I don't have any water on it already. This again is olive oil and it is cranberries that I um, kind of punctured. So they're a little bit softer, but this has an interesting relationship um, that's happening. I don't want to have too much oil because, for example, right here, there was a lot of oil in it. But it's a really nice uh, pink, like almost magenta color that's happening here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush. When you clean your brush, if you are using a brush, it's good not to leave it in the actual container that you're letting it kind of soak in. I didn't know this, you guys, until way later on when I was taking classes. Because what happens is the bristles are all going to rest on the top of, of that container. And so what can happen is the bristles can bend over time. Most of my brushes when I started my early education are all bent. I had to throw them away. Uh, luckily, they were not expensive. But they were pretty much um, not working out for me anymore. So some could say they get ruined that way. So just watch out. You want to just make sure you clean your brush, but then not leave it in to let it soak longer, and then you can just let it sit aside if you're letting it dry. Okay, let's go ahead and try now the next one. This is with the green mixture, only some water, but a, most of it is greens. So the camera's picking up a little bit light, kind of pastel hue of it, which is really nice. Um, not very bright, but it's still really fun to try this out, right? So this is again, the mixed greens that I have. clean my brush again. I'm gonna go ahead and try this turmeric. I'm so excited to try this out. It's a little bit thick, so I might have to add some water to dilute it, but here is some of that yellow. I'll go ahead and make it a little bit longer. Now it is a little grainy. You can see how it's getting some of those 
little lines or dots that are happening. Um, if I keep on moving it back and forth, it kind of starts to grind them with my paintbrush. So I start to get a brighter yellow, really pretty like sun yellow. Okay, and that's with the turmeric. Again, what I used is this that's already been grounded. All right, next I'm going to go ahead and try out the dirt. So this is a little bit darker because I do have soil and I have dirt as well in here and I added some water to dilute it. Let's see how this comes out. So definitely has the little patches of thick kind of dots inside that don't blend completely, but it does give a really soft brown. Also what's interesting or what could be used as different coffees. Coffees can work in teas, which I did not do that. So here would be, let's just say it's a ground plane. Okay, so again, this is dirt and added water. So now it's like mud. Clean my brush again. Now I know I said I wanted to try out this binding agent with the Olivera. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try cinnamon. I had somebody try that last semester and they said they had good results. So we're gonna try it out right now. And I'm just gonna pour a little bit in. You guys, it smells so good. <laughs> okay, so this is a little bit of cinnamon. I'm using these again because they're already grounded, ground, grinded, and they act like um, they're pigment almost, pigment powder. So they're really easy to blend something with or mix rather than us having to ground it ourselves, grind it, excuse me. Okay, so I'm pulling out some of this olive vera with my fingers. So now I have like this gooey substance on the brush. I'm gonna go ahead and now get the cinnamon and try it out. Look, it's not taking it as easily. Dilute it with just a little bit of water. Very, very soft, very light. It's actually Mix some in here. Let me go ahead and mix some olive oil into this. You can see how gooey this is. This is just the lid of a container. So it's grabbing all the medium all on this paintbrush right now. But that's okay. Pull a little bit more. So again, please try out whatever you think, whatever you'd like, and you're gonna share it with the class because uh, we wanna learn. We wanna know from you what you have tried out, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Um, did you enjoy the experience? Was it just really unusual that you're just not really connected to it? But just think about in the past before we had stores where we're able to purchase, um, I mean, I know we're purchasing some of this stuff right now, but we're able to already have stuff mixed for us and have specific types of mediums that we can draw or paint with. Um, we had to find things ourselves. Um, when I was younger, you guys, I love making mud pies and having little stores outside. So it's kind of similar to that idea, right? We're making our own art. We're trying this out um, with natural materials. So now that I got to see the relationship with all of these and I could say what I like and what I don't like, Next, we're going to actually have an art piece that we're going to do. And this is a new sheet of paper. I went ahead with an outline of a really soft graphite pencil. So, so this is a H pencil. There's different types of pencil numbers. Um, any pencil that you have is great. Just really light, like a ghost image. And then I'm going to go ahead and start making my piece. Now, I told you guys that I that we would like to create something that connects with our culture or our region, where if people were to look at this artwork years down the road in advance, um, later on, they'd be able to kind of pinpoint maybe the geographical location of the artist or at least the time period of what's going on. Um, so, or politically or socially or so many other things. So I'm gonna make a landscape. Uh, please make sure that you check out the PowerPoint to see what other students have done in the past. 
some related to really cultural and current events. This again has to do with nature. So I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, sometimes of the years there are beautiful green weeds that we get and they stay for only a little bit in our desert or whatever region you live at. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add a little bit of turmeric and just make little flowers. And if you never painted before too, just experiment, try it out, it's fun. OM is just doing different brush techniques of putting the brush down on the paper. I'll pretend there's like some little buds here. Okay, and then if I'm not satisfied or if I did too much, I can always go back and add more. I can kind of camouflage some if I need to. I'm gonna go ahead and mix colors. I already have this turmeric in here. I'm gonna just go right in and mix it with the cranberry. Let's see what we get from that. So now it has two different colors in there. And I'm going to just kind of pull it around to kind of show like there's some lighter colors perhaps on these stems, which kind of is a nice mixture. Then lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and get my, I'm gonna mix all these colors together. So I have some turmeric and then some cinnamon. And let me see how this works out. <laughs> so here's the ground plane. I'm gonna push it into the, me the medium a little bit more, the other mediums that we already laid out. I'm gonna dilute it with a little bit of water just to soften it. I'm gonna bring some brown up to the piece too, just to kind of give more cohesion of different values that are in the work. And then if I want more detail, um, stuff that's sharper, I can always experiment more because this is very light. But this is our piece. All right, you guys, this is one example of so many that you guys can experiment with. Please try things out. Um, let us know how it goes. We're so excited to see everybody's work. And thank you so much. You guys have a great rest of your day.